Hey, busy business people. I am here today with another entrepreneur taking action, Molly Ho. She used digital products and courses to build a freedom-based lifestyle, and I'm getting the scoop on how she did it. So to kick things off, like, let's talk about what that means, a freedom-based lifestyle. Like, what does that mean for you? Um, when I think of a freedom-based lifestyle, I think that I have the time, the money, and the freedom to do things how I want, how I want to live my life, how I want to run my business. And so it's not like, we all think that we have to follow someone else's blueprint, right, on how to build our business. But for me... I've realized that I really want the freedom to build my life and my business the way that I want. So I guess that's what I mean. Okay, right. That's really cool. I like that. Now, I know you're building a lot of digital products and courses. Like, can you tell us about some of the stuff that you've created? Yeah. So I've built um, a lot of digital products. I started out in 2018. So I started creating marketing templates for photographers because I knew that you know, they have a lot of things to do in their business and a lot of them weren't like that great with design or they just wanted someone else to do it for them. So that's where I started. And then from there, I started creating like more digital products, um, also marketing related. So social media graphics, because I knew they also needed help with social media, blog graphics, Pinterest graphics, etc. And then a few, like I would say half a year later, I started getting into courses because I was using Pinterest to grow my digital products. And it's like, hey, other people probably want to learn how to use Pinterest to generate more leads or get more sales for their business. So that's where it went. And then I created an Instagram course because I used Instagram to sell like my Pinterest course. Um, and then my next course after that was actually a clubhouse course. Um, I don't know if you've been on clubhouse, but it was a clubhouse course. And then, yeah, so that's, um, mainly what I've been doing. And then this year I've created some digital products as well. I know I've played around on clubhouse a little bit. I saw that you had some articles on your site. I was actually reading those earlier today. <laughs> It's like I've played around with it, but I haven't gotten into it and I can't quite wrap my head around it. It's like I've been doing marketing for 15 years and figuring out how in the heck to use Clubhouse to actually market is just escaping my brain so bad. Like it seems like it should be so intuitive, but it's I feel weird when I go into a Clubhouse room. It's like I'm listening in on somebody else's conversation and it just has this strange feeling to me that I can't quite get past <laughs> So I guess the best way to explain it is if we were in a room and then there were like two other people in the room and then we're all on stage and then like we're talking and then other people can come in the room and like listen. So it's kind of like like a conference or an expert panel or what do they call it now? Fireside chats or I don't even know why they call them fireside chats. Most of the ones you see, there's no actual fireside and it's more like an interview. So why it got the name fireside chat, I'm not really sure, but I've seen a lot more of those happening at conferences here lately. So yeah, I guess it makes a little bit more sense if you visualize it that way. So I guess the goal of that would be to what, like to have a conversation on a stage in front of an audience that the audience would be interested in listening to. Yeah, you can use it several ways. So you can either have it with someone else, you can start your own room and, you know, share tips, advice around your subject. So when I started, I used, I did it I did a lot of rooms on like how to start your first digital product or how to create your first course, or I would do like Q and a course creation or content creation, things like that. So a lot of people found me through clubhouse and then they started following me on Instagram and went from there. Wow. That's really cool. I hadn't thought now I'm going to have to go rethink clubhouse. I'm personally not on there anymore. <laughs> I'm not on there anymore. Oh, really? What made you decide to get off of it? Um, I realized that, well, I told everyone this while I was using it. I was like, to be honest, I don't really like talking in a room full of people. I don't like doing that in real life either. And I was surprised at how much I was on there when I first started. And then I ended up taking a break. And then I just like, honestly, never ended my break. <laughs> yeah, I'm the same way. I hated being on stages. People can't believe it. I'll be like talking to people. It's like doing it online is a little bit different. 
um, talking in person, I literally hyperventilate in front of people, but like, I get so nervous and so worked up having to talk to people. It's so crazy. Uh, I just, I don't know. I just learned to do it somehow, but it's still, it, it's definitely not a comfortable place for me to be. Um, but making myself get out of that shell a little bit more and it seems to be worth it so far. So we'll see. <laughs> Um, so like, what did all this, so you got started and you're creating all these digital products and courses. Like, why do you think they performed as well as they did? What do you think your secret was? Um, I think that I look at the mark, the problem that people are having, and then I look at what's currently out there and I'm like, okay, are other people selling something like this? And if so, how much supply is there out there and how can I make mine different? And I would say that my marketing templates did pretty well because I sold them on Creative Market and I utilized SEO. So I also utilized like Pinterest SEO and stuff like that. And then I would say after that, I stopped selling on like marketplaces because marketplaces tend to take a big cut out of your, you know, profit. Um, so once I started selling on my personal brand on like to my own audience, I, someone, Someone else was the one who told me this, but she's like, you're really good at listening to other people's problems. And so I think that when we listen to like what other people are struggling with and we create solutions for them, then, you know, why wouldn't they want to buy the solution if they're struggling with that? So I would say I like listening that. to your audience. Yeah. I love that. That is something that like you see people that have been in business for just years and years and years. And they're still not getting that right. And you just kind of almost stumbled into that a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I really, I really did. Sometimes when I hear other people talk, it sounds so like strategic. And then I'm like, how did I really end up here? <laughs> I kind of, sometimes I feel like yeah, I did stumble yeah. into it. Well, I mean, like you just kind of casually were good at doing things like building buyer personas and avatars. You're kind of, it sounds like maybe doing it a little in your head, but you're still doing it. You're documenting who your you know target audience is. You're going out there and you're looking at the CVJ or the buyer's journey or whatever guru you want to follow, what they call it. And how can you bring someone in, make them aware? How can you like improve your internal profit margins? Like you kind of sneakily did all this just really good business stuff <laughs> that most people really struggle with. Yeah, you just sometimes you just have to take action and then like figure it out along the way and then listen to what other people are doing and then take you know, advice from them. Well, and I mean, like you, you kind of hit on something that was really important in that though. It's like, look at what other people are doing and think, how can I do it better for a specific set of people? You know, she said like, who are we trying to like, who can use this? And then what, you know, what is out there in the marketplace for them currently? And how is that not living up to what they need? And how can I fix that and make a better product? Like that's such a simple thing when you say it like that, but it is something that so many companies just like they struggle with. Like it's applicable to everything from digital products and courses to like service-based businesses to whatever it is you're trying to do. It's applicable, but most people just don't get it. So it's like, I love that you just kind of, you stumbled into that a little bit and just kind of did. I love when I meet people that do that kind of stuff though. They just accidentally do things like the right way. <laughs> Yeah, I love going to restaurants because sometimes I'll get really good customer service and I'm like, wow. And then I'll think about like how that relates to our business, um, right? When we when we talk to people, we feel a certain way or, you know, the interaction is really important. So I like I also like seeing experiences I have, I guess, in real life and then taking that back to my online business. Yeah, I was just looking at something earlier today that took a similar approach. They looked at how video games and stuff work. Um, and we're looking at how they could apply that to courses. It's like, why do things like Pokemon Go and stuff like that? Like, why do people sign up for it, get addicted and just stay with it? But they sign up and they even pay lots of money for courses, but they won't complete them. And she had like looked at the gamification moments, like everything down to when you check off something on a task list, having it make a little chimey noise and do a little animation, just little stupid stuff like that, that can just make the difference on keeping somebody in it. So I think that's, you know, you're mentioning, it just reminded me of that because you're talking about going into a restaurant and, you know, looking at how they do customer service and how can you apply that to your business? It's just like looking at inspiration in odd places that you wouldn't think would be relevant, you know? I think that's really, really, really neat. I love it. 
Um, so I feel like a lot of what you're doing now is teaching other people to kind of follow in your footsteps and create digital products. Like what's some of the advice that you tend to give people as they're looking at making courses or other like downloadable info products? <laughs> so like you've kind of pivoted into helping other people do some of this. So a lot of your kind of things now they're teaching people how to create like courses and stuff. Like what are some tips or advice that you have for people that are getting into that? Um, I would say, think about, well, definitely validate your idea, right? Because a lot of people are like, well, what if it doesn't sell? Well, that's why we validate our idea so that we make sure that we create something that does sell. So like I said, looking at the marketplace, um, seeing what problems are out there. If that's something that people want to solve, if that's something people will pay for. I normally look at the marketplace to see if people are already like actively paying for it because that's normally the best indicator that people are going to pay for something. Um, and then coming up with a plan, I would also say not starting from scratch because there's so many resources out there nowadays, um, to help you, like give you a starting point instead of you literally trying to figure out every step on your own. I love buying toolkits now, like I create toolkits, but I also love buying other people's toolkits or anything that any like resources that they've created because, I know, and you probably know that it saves you like so much time, so you don't have to start from scratch, but also you can use it to make it your own so it doesn't end up looking like everyone else's who also b bought that thing. Um, so I, I would say those are my three tips, um, validating your product, making a plan, um, and then don't start from scratch. And then I would say like just do it because so many people I feel like want to do something and they think of like all of these extra steps of, you know, building a complicated, building a sales funnel, um, having a super nice website. And I'm like, first you have to do lead generation. <laughs> you know, you have to take the first step before trying to do all of those other steps. So I feel like people also try to jump ahead too quickly when they get an idea. Like I get we're that we're excited, but we also have to take the first step. Right. So. No, I think those are all really great tips for people. And I know buying toolkits is definitely a huge part of something that I do, or I use templates to come with things and customize them. Like, do you have any tips that you would share with people that are buying a toolkit and they're trying to customize something to make sure that it's like enough theirs, but they don't murder it if it was designed well and they don't know how to design? Do you have any tips you would share there? Um, I would say like if we're talking about graphics, um, maybe keeping the font sizes the same, like keeping the placement kind of the same and just changing the font and making sure that there's enough white space. Um, and I don't know, because I've also had people buy my stuff sometimes and I look at like what they've created and it's not that it's like super bad, but I'm also like, <laughs> you know, so, but I think, it, um, I think over time people will improve, right? They kind of catch on to like, okay, what works, what doesn't work. So I would say sometimes you just, just go in there and start creating and then you're going to look at other people's and you're going to be like, wow, that really looks nice. And then looking at why it looks good to you or what ab about it appeals to you and kind of learning from there. I don't know because I think I've kind of always had a creative eye, so I don't know how to necessarily give advice to other people when it comes to that because I feel like it just comes intuitively to me <laughs> no I think that's really good advice in the same way I've been doing design work for years and years and it's like I kind of know what looks good and know what doesn't but basics like you just said you know make sure there's still plenty of white space you're not crowding stuff that you keep the font sizes and stuff about the same even if you change the fonts or change the colors around like kind of keep the gist of it still there as much as possible and I mean, that's the intent with toolkits, right? I mean, it's supposed to give you a starting point. And I don't think anybody, like their feelings aren't going to be hurt if it still looks a lot like what you bought when you're done with it. As long as you're not going and reselling the toolkit and like making it your own that way. But like if you're using it, I mean, I don't know any creators that would, you know, feel bad if you kind of kept their design, just put your text in it, put your images on it, called it a day and ran with it, you know? Yeah, I actually design my stuff so that they can do that if they don't have anything. And then at, maybe at some point in their business, they're ready to hire like a one-on-one -on -one designer. But it's, I tell them, I'm like, it's designed for you to use this until, you know, you're comfortable using your own branding or until you want to hire out that part of your business. 
I know you had a lot of really cool ones. Like I was poking through your whole template shop over here. So I'm just going to shamelessly plug you real quick just for the fun of it because these look amazing. You had like a course slide deck with like over 60 slides in it. You have a workbook template, a 100 page workbook template, which I know is crazy useful given how many people are doing like challenges and doing workshops and doing webinars and having a workbook that you can hand someone with that is really good. You like Instagram sales launch graphics, Instagram carousels, marketing your podcast on Instagram because most podcast graphics look like crazy. Um, Instagram marketing pack. Like you've got some really good stuff on here and it's like an all access pass to get all the templates for like what, 127. Like, psh, that's a no brainer, dude. That is amazing. Like absolutely in love with that. And they look phenomenal. Like I'm literally pulling them up and looking at them again while I'm over here. So um, definitely shameless plug there. And I will have links to all of her stuff, wherever you're watching this episode out, out on the interwebs, I will have links to all of that everywhere. Um, so I want to give you a chance to kind of shamelessly plug yourself too. Like, where can someone find you? What do you do? Where do they go? Yeah. So I'm at Molly Hill Studio on all platforms. I think if you just type that into Google, if I've done my job right, then you can find me on Instagram, Pinterest, my website. I think those are main main platforms. Um, and I help people create I help people create and I help you, I teach people how to create their own digital products and courses, depending on whether you want to work with some, someone one-on-one or you want to just, you know, do it yourself. Um, I'm the worst person at pitching myself, but I think that's it. <laughs> it takes practice. Trust me. I've got quite a few years on you at doing it, I think. Um so now the one-on-one -on -one thing, what does that look like if somebody wanted to work with you one-on-one? -on -one? Cause like, I'm telling you guys, it, it, she might not be like exuding it here on this interview, but the stuff I'm seeing, this girl knows her stuff, man. So it's like, if somebody wanted to work with you one-on-one, -on -one, like, what does that look like? Yeah. So I have a one-on-one -on -one coaching package or I have a one-on-one -on -one coaching and done with you package. So the done with you package is where I help you like create your course slides and create your course workbook. I probably create um, a digital product for you. So I'll design it, but you write all the content and then the coaching one is where you do everything and then I just coach you through it. That's really cool. I like that. How long does it typically take to put that kind of stuff together? Um, my coaching packages are normally three months, and then we do both a digital product and a course. Cool. Yay. I'm excited. I think I'm going to end up talking to you a little bit probably after this episode about a few things. I really like it, and I know like our goal is to try and keep these at like 20 minutes or less, and we're kind of wrapping up our time here. Is there anything else that you want to share with our audience? Um, no, I think I'm good. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for coming on today and for sharing some of your expertise. This has been pretty good. All right. So entrepreneurs, guys, this is your call to take action. Join our community at etatoday.zone and learn how to build a business that enables your lifestyle instead of taking over your life. See you there. Mm -hmm.